Good morning. You are welcome to another edition of Import Export Platform Facebook Live from Three Team Pest Trade Academy. We we'll continue from where we left up yesterday. Remember, yesterday we started discussing the starting and managing export business, uh, the problem, and we are in seventy nine today, part seventy nine. And like I'm say, as I was saying, that we might ended up in about hundred, and that would be a very good one. So we have a series of training <laughs> that have up to about part hundred. Um, um, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon is a major challenge. I will try to have a recap of what I discussed yesterday. Then I will take it up from there. I said yesterday that human exposure to PAH occurs in three ways. Inhalation, dharma contact, and consumption from contaminated food. And um, between 88 to 98% of the source of PAH in human body is from food, is from diet. Processing of food at high temperature by grilling it, roasting it, frying it, smoking it, all of them generate PAH. But some PAH are very potent carcinogen, where some are not so much of a problem. I'll be looking at the various PAH this morning. The actual level of PAH in smoked food depends on several variables in the smoking process, including the type of smoke generator. What are you using? Is it wood? Is it um, uh, gas? Is it um, charcoal? Is it um, different options? About four options we'll be looking at today. Um, the composition of smoke and the condition of processing affect the sensory quality, shelf life, and wholesomeness of the product. The potential as health hazard associated with smoked food may be caused by a carcinogenic component of wood smoke and the derivative of PAH like nitro PAH and oxidated PAH are one of the um, what have been implicated or seen when such food is tested. And yesterday I mentioned benzoapyrene that is a major contributor to the overall burden of cancer. Now, and I ended up last today talking about a research that was done with catfish and that the catfish was processed with sawdust, with firewood, with charcoal, and with oven. Now, they were processed with different um, uh, smoke generator and that also led to different effects. Now, PAH that were found in this sawdust, firewood, charcoal, oven dry include naphthalene, acinaphthalene, as, um, acinaphthalene, fluorine, phenantrine, anthracene, fluorantine, pyrene, Benzoatracine, chrysine, benzofluorantine, benzo, benzofluorantine B, benzofluorantine K, benzoaparine, um, dibenzoantracine, benzopyrrolene, and indenopyrrolene, pyrene rather. Now, each of these were measured using sawdust, firewood, charcoal, oven dry. And we found out that the total microgram of PAH in sawdust was 2,058 microgram per kg. 2,058 microgram per kg. That is for That is for um, sawdust, for firewood, 1,320 microgram per kg. 1,320 microgram per kg. Each of them have different figure, and but the summation. Charcoal, 1,136 microgram per kg. 1,136 microgram per kg. 
then oven dry 332 microgram per kg now don't think that oven dry is the best yet don't think so yet because it's lower it's lower the lowest is oven dry followed by charcoal followed by firewood followed by sort of well don't 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 assume that is the best yet let's take it one by one as discussed earlier all PAH are harmful to human health as they have been found to be carcinogenic. However, benzoaparin has been found to be most harmful. But in the three I talked about, benzoaparin were not detectable. Benzoaparin were not detectable. In this particular research, Benzoaparin were not detectable using sawdust, wood, charcoal, and oven dry for smoking. But as I, until, up, up until July 31st, 2014, the maximum acceptable benzoaparin in food was 5 micrograms per kg. But from September 2014, European Union reduced it to 2 micrograms per kg, benzoaparin, 2 micrograms per kg. Now, in the one we just looked at, benzoaparin was not detectable. Benzoaparin was not detectable. In the last one we looked at, benzoaparin was not detectable. Now, the European Union in September 1, 2014, stated that benzoaparin, benzoanthracine, chrysine, benzofluorantine, should not exceed 12 microgram per kg combined. Now, remember before, they said benzoaparin was 5. They reduced it to 2 in September 2014. That same year, they now said that benzoaparin uh, plus benzoanthracine plus chrysine plus benzofluorantine, if you add this, the, this, the amount in microgram per kg in any food item, should not be more than 12 microgram per kg. This took place September 1, 2014. Even though the result from the table that we read before showed that oven dry for catfish was better than other form of smoking because it contained the lowest level of PAH. However, if you subject this result to the standards set by European Union Commission for Food, criteria show that only one of them is good enough. And I will show you which one now. The collective maximum level of benzoaparin, benzoatracine, chrysine, and benzofluorantine set by the commission was supposed to be 12 microgram per kg. But if you look at that table, the table I mentioned earlier, you will notice that, look at this. For sodas, benzoatracine is non detectable. Firewood, benzoatracine is non detectable. Charcoal, benzoatracine is non detectable. Oven dry, it is 20.4. Chrysine, sodas, 23.1. Firewood, 5.5 charcoal, it is not detectable, oven dry, 8.9. Benzofluorantine, sawdust, it's non detectable, firewood, non detectable, charcoal, non detectable, oven dry, non detectable. Benzoaparin, sawdust, non detectable, firewood, non detectable, charcoal, non detectable, oven dry, non detectable. If you then look at the total of the four PAH stated in the EU regulation for sodas, it is 23.1 microgram per kg. If you look at that total four PAH for firewood, it is 5.5 microgram per kg. If you look at that also for oven dry, it is 29.3 microgram per kg. If you look at it for charcoal, it is non-detectable. 
That basically says that if you are exporting an item that will be smoked dry to EU, you cannot use sawdust to smoke dry it. You cannot use oven to smoke dry it. You can only use charcoal, which is non-detectable, or firewood, which is just about 5.5% of uh, the 4 PAH microgram per kg. What is this telling you exactly? This is basically telling us that as far as EU is concerned, smoke-dried fish, firewood are better than sawdust fish and oven dry. So the next time you want to buy smoked fish, ask the owner, producer, try to investigate how does he smoke this fish? What does he use to smoke dry the fish? Is he using sawdust? That's not good. Is he using oven? And many people use oven. That's not good. He should be using charcoal fired or he should be using firewood. You know, when you look at what we consume in Nigeria, from the corn you buy on the street to the plantain, um, smoked plantain, charcoal smoked plantain that you buy on the street, to the suya that you buy on the street, they are all not too good for our health. Nobody is measuring the level of PAH in those products. You know, the first time I detected this, I stopped taking suya. Straight up. Straight up. Because suya for me is even worse. It's meat. And over time, when I get to learn also about um, uh, red meat, I just stop completely. I just stop completely. Just stop completely. Why? You know, as you grow old, you need to begin to be much more, more mindful of what you eat. If you are still a teenager or under 30, maybe you can afford it. Maybe you can afford it. But you grow old, in your mid-age, in your 40s and 50s, don't allow what you are eating to eat you up. In fact, as a young person, you are better off because it gives you more vigor strength so that you don't just eat rubbish. And the major issue is that nobody's watching this in our environment. And that's just the most painful thing for me in Nigeria. Nobody watching this thing in our environment. People, people just do whatever they like. And the health of people are being affected. But nobody's watching it. It's so unfortunate. It's so, so bad. So, so bad. That nobody's watching it. People can sell all sorts in the market. If you go to the market, you see the way even the food that human beings are purchasing are, taking, are, are being displayed. Sometimes even for the fish and the meat, you see the ant playing on it and enjoying themselves. And they will use the, the, the knife to chase them away. People will go there and still buy. People will go there and still buy. You know why people are buying? It seems as if there is no choice. But I always say that you always have a choice. You always have a choice. I can afford to eat without meat or fish. Why? I, I know for a fact that, look, our alimentary canal as human being is designed to be herbivore, not carnivore. Our alimentary canal, our digestive system is more towards herbivorous animal than carnivorous animals. So, you know, I was reading a book some time ago. Let me just talk about this. Just, just a digression on the, this health issue. I was reading a book some time ago. Maybe you want to read that book. It's, the book is titled to Never Be Sick Again. Never Be Sick Again. <laughs> Never Be Sick Again. Uh, the book is titled to Never Be Sick Again. Why? And the, the book says there is only one disease, two causes, and seven pathways. There is only one disease, Two causes and seven pathways. These two, these ones, is caused by either toxicity in the system or deficiency in the system. Either is caused by toxicity in the system or deficiency in the system. 
Toxicity meaning deposit of waste that because of a lot of things you consume that the body cannot digest. And they remain in the body as a waste and they become toxic because the rate of bringing them in is much than the rate of taking them out. Remember, we are discussing starting a managing export business. We are looking at the problem of food, and I'm trying to give us an insight into why the West are against some of the food we sell. They are against it. They have done a lot of research, and they know the implication of all this on the health of their citizen. So, if you, um, if the disease rather. Is caused by toxicity or um, toxicity or deficiency. Deficiency means there are no enough minerals in the body, no enough nutrients in the body. Why? You know, we eat a lot of stuff, but most of the stuff we eat have lost their nutrients. Most of them are just chaff, useless. But we eat them anyway. Why? That is why it's available. But a number of them have lost their nutrient. A number of them have lost their nutrient. But we eat them anyway. The one disease that human beings have is called the cellular malfunction. Cellular malfunction. Which is as a result of either toxicity or deficiency. Deficiency means you don't have enough minerals, protein, amino acid, glucose, vitamins, Minerals in the body, especially vitamin and minerals, because protein you take that regularly, uh, carbohydrate you take that regularly. Vitamin and mineral are the major issue where we have deficiencies. So and these make the cell to malfunction. When the cell malfunction, it is called disease. Cellular malfunction is called disease. The pathways to toxicity and deficiency are seven. From nutrition to toxin to psychological, um, psychological to physical to genetic to medical. Different issues causing, leading to deficiency and toxicity. So nutrition is a big one in this. Nutrition is a big one. What we eat. And it is recommended that there are four big, it's called the big four, that you sh if you are going to avoid some meal, try to avoid these four in your meal as much as possible as much as possible avoid this four in your meal as much as possible why because of their implication because of their implication implication on us because what you eat might be eating you up what you eat might be eating you up number one Sugar. Number two, hydrogenated fat like migraine. Number three, milk. Number four, flour. <laughs> you know, each time I talk about this at any event, people are always asking me, Daily so what are we going to eat? And I said, Go and check. Now there are still other things you can eat. <laughs> I digress a little. So that we can understand exactly what is going on in our society, how we'll be made to believe some things about what people want to sell, and they sell it to us as if it's the best thing that ever happened to you. They sell it as if it's the best thing that ever happened to you, such that if you are not able to, it's like, no, no, you don't even know what is going on, you don't even know what you're doing. Yeah, because you are not eating things that really could be actually dangerous to your health. <laughs> Is what you are eating, eating you up. Is what you are eating, eating you up. Now, these are the problems and challenges that we face in export. Especially for people that have to deal with food item. Food item. Food item. PAH is real. PAH contributes to the overall burden of cancer. You want to make conscious effort to ensure that you reduce the burden of PAH in your body. So, that burnt food, don't eat it again. 
If you eat burnt food, you are taking in pH. As much as possible, reduce anything you are consuming that is produced or smoked or roasted from wood and gas. Grilled meat is not good for your health. Grilled. Maybe barbecue even would be better than grilled meat. <laughs> because in grilling, you have to use oven. Ladies will correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> you know? Grilled meat. Grilled meat. But if it is barbecue, probably makes sense because they are going to be using charcoal. They are going to be using charcoal. If charcoal is used, it's fine. But as much as possible, avoid, avoid, avoid. Stop made of or do from firewood. Firewood is the worst, actually. Firewood is the worst because of the, the, the smoke, the dark smoke that comes out of it. The smoke from wood of charcoal is still a lot, lot better than firewood. So firewood is just out of it completely, out of it completely. But if you are going to be exporting any product of Nigeria and you are going to the EU, you now know exactly what should be, you should, should be using to fire your factory, to fire whatever it is you are producing, so as to ensure that at the end of the day, you do what is expected of you to do in terms of the quality of the product you are shipping. Remember, this is import export platform Facebook Live from Trade Impact Street Academy. My name is Dele Ayemibo. This video is available on our YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Bami Dele Ayemibo. Or you can also visit Trade Impact TV. On this YouTube channel, you can get to see all the videos. Remember, this is part 79. So the part 1 to part 79, you see them on the YouTube. As you visit that YouTube channel, please remember to share the video with your friends and, fe and relatives. Subscribe, click on the notification bell, like the video, and drop your comment before you leave our page. See you in the evening by 6 p.m. as we continue the conversation starting and managing export business part 80. Part 80. I will still be discussing problems. But this time around, I will change gear. I will be discussing problems on a general scale. And I will be talking a lot about principles that we need to use to drive our business. You know, you will face problems as a business person. But what you need to learn is to know Principles that should guide your operations. <laughs> if you work with the right principle to guide your business operation, you don't get worried, perturbed, or disturbed because of those challenges. So I will spend a lot of time. I will go a little bit away from um, core discussion on exports. I will be discussing, I will spend a lot of time discussing what I call principles. Major principles that should guide anyone that wants to do business, especially the business of exportation. Especially the business of exportation. And we might spend some days also discussing that. So I'll be talking about different principles. I call them um, export business principles. Uh, um, will be like it will be more like tackling problems tackling export problem using principles you know um we are talking about problem then we are now provide, providing solutions so it's like solutions so it's like discussing the export business solution so it will be starting managing export business problems solution to the problems solutions to the problems solutions to the problem and in talking about social problems, I'll be using different principles. I will list the problems and then use different principles to be able to solve those problems. To be able to solve those problems. It's going to be another amazing journey, maybe for another five, six episodes. We're going to be just talking about principles, 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 principles. 
that I strongly believe if they can be imbibed, it will help a lot to be able to grow your business. If this principle can be imbibed, it will help a lot to be able to grow your business. Thank you very much for listening. See you in the evening. Bye for now.